Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara, shapes and surfaces in Unreal 4. So to get things started, in the content browser, we'll right click, effects, and I'm going to create a Niagara meter from an empty template. And I'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want. Then we'll open it up and we'll save it. Let it compile. Now, there's a few things I want to do to set this up. And that's, we're gonna go to emitter update and we're gonna add a spawn rate. We're gonna set this spawn rate to something like 300. And then in the emitter state, we're gonna make sure that the life cycle mode is set to self, let that compile. We're gonna change the loop behavior to once, fixed, and we'll set the loop duration to five. The next thing we wanna do is look at initialize particle. And in the sprite, size mode, we're going to change this to uniform, and we're going to change the size to 5, so that the particles are a little bit smaller. There we go. This is all set up. Now the idea of shapes and surfaces are that you can spawn particles on a shape or surface. And the way that we can access those are in the particle spawn. And it may seem deceptive at first, but they're located in location. Now the shapes that we're talking about specifically are box, cone, cylinder, sphere, and torus. Now as an example, if we click on the box location, we should see that right away, all these particles are adhering to the box shape. And if we let this play, we see that they're just all spawning within that box shape. Now the options that we have available to us, they're pretty straightforward, they're pretty simple. You know, if we wanna offset this, we wanna move it away from zero, zero, we can do that. That's where the location comes in. And then we have box size, right? So if we wanna make this more of a rectangle, we can do that. So let's go ahead and look at another location. So we'll go to the particle spawn, location, and we're gonna look at the sphere location. And right away, you'll see that the particles adhere to a sphere. And for the most part, this is kind of similar to the box, right? So we can change the radius, you know, how big it is. We can offset it. We can scale, but a notable difference with this is that there's distribution. Now we'll take a look at the sphere distribution in one second, but we have hemispheres. So if we want to cut our sphere in half, right, we can do that depending on the hemisphere that we want. And the next thing that we have is surface only band thickness. And if we turn this on, our particles are going to adhere just to the surface of that sphere. We have options whether or not we want it on the inside centered or the outside. So now if we look at the surface distribution, right now it's set to random. But to understand random, we're gonna look at direct. So direct is based on UVs, right? So there's a mesh that these particles are being adhered to, and that mesh has UVs, and unwrap. And if we move these, right, this is gonna move along the U axis, and this is gonna move along the V axis. Now what's notable about this is if we take our U position and our V position, and we change these both to random, and let it compile, you'll see that this goes back to what it was before. This goes back to what we had with random. Now the only difference is that random has some other options with it. You know, so we can do the hemispheres, and we can choose whether or not to have the surface only, or to have it all throughout the sphere. So let's go and look at one more shape so that I can demonstrate one more thing. So we'll go to the particle spawn, location, and we're gonna do the cone. So going through the options that we have, we have our cone angle, right? And then we have our cone length. What axis do we want it on? Now I'll probably leave it on this axis, but we can, we can rotate this, you know, put it on a weird axis, whatever you want. Point distribution, this is basically whether or not you want it like this or if you want it with the end cap. So as you move this, you'll see that this is fading away and cutting off the top. Leave that at zero. And then we can also offset this. There is some shaping here. So if we turn on enable wedge, this is gonna make a wedge shape, right? So it's, it's not round, right? It's squared off. And then we also have flattened end caps. 
Now, what's cool about all of the shapes are that you can use parameters and dynamic parameters with them. Even though that they're in particle spawn, you can update them, you can animate them with a meter update. So if we come to a meter update and we add a newer existing parameter directly, I'm going to add a float here. And we're just going to rename this to something like cone angle. In the cone angle, I'm going to change this to a curve, float from curve. And what I want to do is I'm going to start our angle out real small, and then I'm going to make it real big, you know, something like 240. Right. And we'll just frame this so we can see it. And now in our cone location, I'm going to go to that cone angle, and I'm going to change this to our cone angle parameter. And I'll hit save. And now if we scrub on our timeline, or even if we let it play, you know, you'll see that this is animating open. And so there's a lot, there's a lot of options here. There's a lot of flexibility with these shapes as they are. So from here, I encourage you to go through and play with these different shapes just to see what they do. There's a lot of similarities with the other ones with what I've already shown you. But get used to them, realize what they're good for, and then also realize where their limitations are. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.